I'm Gaz, and this is Let's Play Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. This is the last game in the Impression City Building series, and was the only game that didn't have an expansion. It did have a big content patch, which added another campaign and a few other maps and stuff, but that's it. Whereas Zeus was sort of a departure from the previous game design uh, seen in Caesar and Pharaoh, Emperor is a bit of a return to the old game style, game mechanics, but it brought along a lot of the things from Zeus and added a lot of new features and mechanics itself, one of which was multiplayer. I'm not sure if the server is still up, I really doubt it, but you could go online and find a map and play with other people and build your city and then trade with them or go to war with them. It was really underused though, I don't really recall seeing more than half a dozen people online, but uh, it was interesting anyway. So let's get started. And I will choose a name for myself. Something sort of Chinesey. Um, <clears throat> a thing about this game is that you could choose a zodiac animal, and when it was the year of that animal, you get a bonus. I mixed tenses there. Anyway, I'm going to stick with the rat, and let's begin a historical campaign. And historical campaign. Uh, Let's see, right, it must be in the custom campaigns. Yeah, this is the one added by the patch. And it takes place in between 5 and 6, I think? Anyway, I'll probably play through the whole game. Well, may maybe not these, though. Actually, the last time I played this campaign, I think the final mission became unwinnable. You just literally could not win. So I might skip over that. I don't know, but I will definitely go through all of these. Of course, just like the Zeus Let's Play, it will not be all at once. I will take breaks. Um, the Shah Dynasty campaign is rather short, though, so I might go on to number two in the Shang Dynasty as well. But let's start out with the Shah Dynasty, which doubles as the tutorial lessons, but uh, nonetheless, it is an actual campaign. Welcome to ancient China, home to the world's oldest continuous civilization. You are about to travel back in time over 4,000 years, for it was then along the fertile banks of the Wei River that several families banded together, discarded their nomads' cloaks, and established a small settlement. As village elder, it is your duty to plan the layout of this new settlement. You will be called upon to provide your people with food and water as well as a means to slake their spiritual thirst. Okay, so shelter. Give them uh, road access, water, and do fire prevention. Just talks about all the main stuff. Okay, and then it says we're going to need to set up hunters for food and a big storage depot. And then we need a market square to distribute it pretty much all just like Zeus, and then they want uh, an ancestral shrine. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the housing first. This is really a bad layout. Um, but that's okay. So we'll go like that for now. Put something like that there, put a roadblock down. Uh, one of the things this game also dealt with. If you watch my Zeus Let's Play, in Zeus there are, I'm just gonna put this down here, there are uh, the appeal buildings, well not buildings, uh, like gardens and stuff that you could put up because you needed appeal to get to a certain level of housing evolution and that would affect all the sorts of stuff like that. Uh, this game sort of includes that with aesthetics but it also includes a mechanic called feng shui and certain landmarks like the uh, stone here or trees affect different buildings so the inspector's tower here you can see is 
yellow, and that means it's not in an ideal location. But when I put it next to the rocks, it is. And a thing about... Well, it doesn't really affect it. I mean, it won't stop it from functioning. But if you put things in better or more appealing positions, it's possible that they will evolve themselves. In this game, the uh, other structures besides houses will evolve. Well, not all of them. Some of them will. In this case, the well and the inspector's tower will evolve. And basically, that just gives you another walker. So if we could evolve this, we would get two inspectors from one building. And I guess the advantage there is that you could have them cover more area so you could build your cities bigger. But anyway, let's just plunk that down. And let's see. Ancestral Shrine, as you can see, is not good to go by rocks. But uh, we could put it here. Although, actually, we don't need that right now probably not going to have enough people anyway. So... Yeah, I know. Um... Yeah, I don't want to put it by the rocks. Houses don't like to be near the rocks either. Hmm. Well, let me see the... Uh... Market Square. Yeah, that's actually where I should have put that. Okay, well, I will delete that. Uh, we can't have access to it now, but there are walls, just like in Zeus. Well, Zeus was columns, but there are walls that function the same way, but the walls have gates. And the gates are pretty interesting because it allows you to sort of direct traffic. You can determine who goes through them. So I could have people from the market go through them, but deny anyone else being able to walk through it. Which has the advantage of building complexes right next to each other that sort of share buildings, but then you don't have to worry about these guys wandering into another neighborhood. Um, how are we doing on people? I guess I don't have access to that, so I can't see how many people. But we can always talk to people here. to eat, but at least I have plenty to drink. So people need jobs, according to him, as well as food. Um, I wish I could see how many. But uh, we should probably start. Mm, let's start with the hunter's tent. Find where we can hunt. I guess it'll be up there. We can hunt pheasants. I have to cross that river, though. Which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and these should be... Well, here's a good place, I guess. I'll put one right there. And put this one right here. Now, I might be wrong. Actually, let's look at this. Roadblocks, okay. Yeah, so the hunter's tents are in no danger of fire or collapse, so we don't need the inspector coming through. And I believe the farm acts the same way. Um, also, in this game, you could actually now turn off individual industries, which had the advantage of leaving the building there, but then you could allocate workforces elsewhere. And that is something I lamented not having in the Zeus Let's Play. I don't know why I keep mixing past tense when I'm <laughs> obviously playing now. In the present. Oh well. Uh, I think we're probably good on people. So let's see. Let's go back to the distribution.
put a food shop down and let's get a mill which uh, is the storage it's a huge granary style object now this actually will I believe require uh, wait what's the goal 150 people yeah this will require uh, inspection so you know what I'm just gonna put this over here even though it's right beside all this stuff and the houses are not going to evolve because they don't want to be near it that's okay this is just the starter city okay so now we need oh wait a minute we don't have farms here I'm looking backwards at everything that's okay so in hindsight I should have actually put that back up here so they don't have to walk so far and I should probably get another one because if that's our only food source then we're gonna need more but now we can also put down an ancestral shrine so religion in this game is a little bit different than in Zeus well it's a lot different actually and it is uh, what is the problem here that's what I was afraid of god damn it okay fine We'll put the mill back down here, and we will we will put an inspector. Yeah. Okay. I knew that was gonna happen. Don't accept anything. Well, actually, now it's completely gone. So, okay. I just wanted to get this done quickly. So yeah, religion is an interesting thing in this game because it goes back to the sort of original formula, I guess you could say, which was that rather than building a temple to one of the gods and then having a benefit come from that temple, you actually... Yeah, you can... Uh, do the individual gods themselves, but they come in sets, I guess. So the ancestral shrine comes with ancestral gods that, uh, well, actually they're probably the most useful. But later on you get Buddhism and Taoism, and they each have individual gods as well that provide different benefits. So you can actually worship multiple gods that sort of complement each other. Although, that really depends on which ones are available during your mission. And, uh, we should probably... Sacrifice. Now, in this game you have to actively sacrifice. The priests will not go and collect what they need. Which goes back to sort of the Pharaoh and, I think, Caesar mechanics. Definitely Pharaoh, though. In Pharaoh, you had to pick and choose and keep all the gods happy manually. But uh, the ancestral building is the well the, done. Uh, you have yeah. successfully built a small village and fed them well on meat provided by the hunters. It is easy to see that you learn quickly. Press the proceed button to continue on to the next mission where your people will learn how to coax seedlings from the fertile land. Okay. We can check out the score here. And uh, it took me too long, I guess. But uh, as I was saying, the Ancestral Shrine is the only religious building that is sort of standalone. There are ways to cheat the system in the later ones, because in Taoism and Buddhism, you need a building to train priests and then a building for them to go to. And, well, when we get to that point, I'll sort of go through how to bend the rules a little bit and cheat the game out of certain requirements. But anyway, for now, I think we're done here, and uh, I will see you in the next episode.